Okay, we're going to get started with some simple CSS or cascading style sheets. Now, when you're first starting out, you're building pages, cascading style sheets can seem pretty overwhelming. So we're just going to take a look at some basic ones to help make your page look a little better. All we've been working with right now has been the default settings that each browser comes with. So we have this Times New Roman font. Uh, everything is left aligned, you can see, um, and it just doesn't really scream exciting, read me, anything like that, right? It screams beginning web developer and I don't like CSS or don't know anything about CSS. So how can we improve upon this page? We can improve upon this page by using some simple style, and our style we use CSS. We can use um, an embedded CSS, and that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to have a little CSS style sheet that we're going to add to this page. We're going to do uh, the tag, use the tag style, and then we're going to do type equals text slash CSS. You'll see that as an option in brackets. Okay, now all CSS styles are created with what's called a rule. And one of the simplest rules that we can apply is a rule to the body tag. So one of the easiest ways to apply styles to your web page is to apply style to a particular HTML tag. So let's start there with our body tag. So to create a rule, using an HTML element, I'm going to put that HTML tag body, and then I'm going to use these curly brackets or braces, however you want to call them. So now this says, okay, I've got, I'm going to apply style to the body tag, to anything that applies to the body tag. One of the most important things about the body tag is that it can control the margins on our page. So instead of this being all the way over here, let's say I want to push it more into the web page. So there's a, there's a simple way to do this. We can just have margin and then we can do something like maybe I want 15%. Okay, again, you can specify percentages or an actual value for pixels. but we generally don't use pixel values these days because we don't know the size of the screen that people are looking at. So it's good to kind of use percentages and that way we can have a little understanding of, you know, how that margin might work. Okay, so I just changed that. And then now look at the difference. My page already looks different, but I've got 15% here, 15% here, 15% here, and 15% here. Maybe I don't want that much margin on the top and the bottom. So the way to do that is to specify the margin either by saying something like margin left. Okay, that will, will get me the left side. So if I just say margin left and click save, watch what happens. There's only a margin here now. There's no margin here, which looks a little funky. There's no margin at the top and bottom. So I can come down and write margin right and do 15%. You always want to end these declarations with a semicolon. Okay, and generally what you have on one side, you want to have on the other, you know, unless you're doing some real funky design or something. Now let's say I want to have a little bit of margin at the top and bottom, but not 15%. So maybe I'll do margin top at 5%. And oops, I totally spelled that wrong. Always pay attention to your typos because that's a good way for things not to work. And margin bottom, 5%. Okay, so I'm going to save it. Oh, got a nice little error there. Let me try saving it again. Okay, technical difficulties here. I'm not sure why that's happening.
Okay, I fixed my problem. I just uh, copied and pasted my code into a different file name. Apparently, this is my old computer and it loses its mind sometimes. Hopefully, you won't run into that problem. Okay, so um, I've got my margin left at 15, my margin right at 15, the top and bottom at 5. And there's actually a much cooler, simpler way of writing this. It's just by typing in the word margin and putting all of these percentages in a row. Think of it like a clock, okay? So the top is the 12, and then the right is the, what's that, 3, and the bottom is the 6, and the left is the 9. So you write this tag clockwise. You start at the top. So top, 15%. Right, 15%, oh, sorry, top, 5%, 15%, and then the next two are going to be exactly the same, right? 5% and 15% with a semicolon. So instead of having all these different things, I can just simplify it with specifying the four values with the regular margin. Well, let me show you here. So there you go, it hasn't changed any. Even better yet, I can just get, because this is the same pattern, I can just put in two, and this is CSS shorthand, okay? But then if you really wanted something to be different between the top and the bottom, like maybe you only want 5% in the top and you want 10% in the bottom, then you would need to specify all uh, four of them. Okay, so. Margin is definitely something good. Now the other thing that we might want to do is put a color for the background. And we can put in the words background color. Background color. And let's say I'm going to put in, oh, I don't know, something obnoxious because I like to do obnoxious things. So you can type in colors or you can put in a color picker and I'll show you. Okay, so there is my really obnoxious yellow background, which nobody, of course, is going to want to read my page. Um, let's see here. I think there's a way to use the color picker, <clears throat> color picker with brackets. It might be an extension that we need to put in. I'll go ahead and um, look that up next time. So let's say I want to put some kind of green color in here. I can select from all the different greens. So I think I'd rather have green, um, which version? Dark sea green would sound good. Save that. <clears throat> okay, that seems more my style. Now you'll notice my images have white background, so those are going to display as white images in there. Okay, so I've got that color. Now what if I want to change the color for my font? That's another uh, style just called color, okay? So color is just the text color. Now when you have a background color and you have a text color, you're going to want to make sure that there's good contrast between them. So I wouldn't want to have a green text color or something really light like yellow. That wouldn't look good. So I want to stick with something that's going to be dark and not, you know, real obnoxious. So let's see what dark blue looks like. I'm going to save that. Yeah, don't really care for that. Maybe I just want like a dark gray. Let me see if there's a dark gray. Dark slate gray. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, still not my favorite. Um, once we get that color picker, it'll be much easier. We usually represent our web colors with a hex symbol and let me show you there's some amazing tools out there for web uh, web color pickers let's look at a web color picker um, and if you find the hex code so let's say I want like this dark color right here up at the top and there's much cooler uh, color pickers out there but you want to look for a six digit hex code and that will represent the color you need to, if you're not naming the color, you need to put the, the pound sign for your hex colors. Okay, so let's see what that looks like with that dark gray. 
it's pretty similar to that one there you go even darker again like I said you can really get caught up in design of things and spend hours doing this all right there so that looks better to me it's not quite black but it's kind of a darker darker gray so you can still see it nicely now let's say I really don't like Times New Roman let's say I want to try a different font so again because we're applying this all to the body we can just be we can just apply this to the body tag so font family is what we want to use and if you know the name of a font there's certain font names that most people have so Arial, and then I'm going to put Sans Serif, Sans Serif, for people who might not have Arial. So I'm just going to leave that in here and see what it looks like. Now watch when I click Save, my font's going to change. Okay. Now again, I'm still I'm not a big fan here. I don't generally like to use this, but you can see the difference here, right? Now let's say I want to have my paragraph font be a different font size or a different font type then I can create a new rule and this rule I only want applied to the paragraph tag so I can put a P in there and font size let's say I'm gonna put in 14 let's see what this looks like that makes it small. Let's see if I can make it a little bigger. So you can play around with these things. Now we use font size in many different ways. I'm just throwing that in there. Um, but when we talk about more advanced concepts, so we usually use M's. Okay, so you notice that that applied just to my paragraphs and not to any of my other things. So my links and everything are still different. So you want to keep things consistent without completely, you know, making the page look weird. Like if you have like five different fonts on your page and different colors, it gets a little obnoxious. So you might want to go through then and change all of your other fonts to also have that particular size or something like that. Maybe I want my what is this? This is an H1. Maybe I want my H1 to be a different color. So I can come down to H1 and specify that I want, remember, text is color. Maybe it, let's just pick something here. Do I have like a dark green? I don't know. This is probably going to look bad. Uh, don't forget that curly bracket to close out that rule. Save it. And now just the H1 is a different color. If I wanted my H2 to be a different color and have them all be the same, then I can use a comma and do an H1, H2, and they're all green now as well. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little idea of how we apply style. Now, because this is just one page, it's okay for me to have my style sheet included at the top of my page. And the reason I do this right now is because it's a good way to teach you how to put style into things. Remember, a style is kind of like the, the wallpaper and the draperies and the, you know, the paint color that you choose for your house. We, we all have different houses, but maybe we have a house that's built exactly the same with the same floor plan. The house is the HTML structure and the CSS is the different colors and design that we all use to decorate that same house. Okay? All right, so next up we're going to learn how to FTP our websites up to our web server. Okay? Thanks. Bye.